a pair of frastics. You've already seen one of these. Um, and it is the favorite phrase of Cato the Elder. Say it with me now. Carthago de Linda Est, right? There it is. Um, my shoes are too small and Carthage must be destroyed. Whatever. Um, this is a passive periphrastic. It contains a form of the verb to be sumese, usually present tense, and the future passive participle of the verb to destroy, deleo delere. Okay? That's the one that's, if, you've, if we've got the chart right that you drew that looks like this, um, we got pres, we've got perf, we've got fut. Yeah, this is the one that has the uh, present stem plus undus aum. The future passive participle. There it sits. All right? And the translation of this is to be about to whatever the verb is. So technically, delendus would be to be about to be destroyed. Yeah? Um, or about to be destroyed, I guess you'd say. Um, but when you pair it with a form of sumese, it gives us a sense of must. Not only is it going to happen in the future, by God, it's got to happen. Um, must is involved. That's why Carthago de Lenda Est, when we translate it, translates as Carthage must be destroyed, because the addition of the Est makes that what it is. Okay? I changed my mind a little bit. Let's talk about some of these paraphrastic -y forms that exist in English, because they do. I'm going to provide you with the first example. The name Amanda. Put on your Latin hat. This is a future passive participle. See the undus? Amo amare means love, yeah? So if we throw must in there and make it passive, what does the name Amanda mean? Must be loved. Nice, huh? All right, here's another name. Here's our undus aum. Mirror mirare is to wonder. What does Miranda mean? Must be wondered at. Now, this name in particular I like very much. And in my novel, The Odin Inheritance, the great aunt, who's like goofy and wacky and stuff, um, who's got some secrets, her name, I named her Miranda because she just showed up. I was writing the book, suddenly here she is. And I don't know where she came from, someplace deep in my head, I guess. But she was doing and saying things that were a complete surprise to me most of the time. And that, for the most part, got left in the book. So I named her Miranda because I didn't know where the hell she came from. Must be wondered at. The last one is not a name. Agenda. What is an agenda? An agenda is a list of things that must be done, right? Ago agar, agi optum, to do or drive, there it be. Okay? So we have these paraphrastic forms in English. Of course, most people don't know what they are because it's English and nobody bothers to tell you. I'm telling you, here's some examples um, that give you the idea that the sense of must is involved in this particular verb form. Okay? 
So how do you form it? Well, that's what I'm going to tell you. All right. So here we have a phrase, the clothes must be washed. The word for clothes is vestimentum. Say neuter, second to clench a noun. To wash is lawo, laware. Uh, I think it's lawi. And I don't remember what the fourth is. But we don't need the fourth for this, so it doesn't really matter. All right? So the clothes must be washed. Clothes in plural is going to be what? Nominative plural, neuter, second declension. Westimenta, precisely. I'm so glad you got that. Now, if we were just going to have, say, clothes are, we'd use a form of sumese, right? This westimenta makes it third person plural. Hmm? So we would use sunt, because sunt goes with vestimenta. It's plural, third person. Hmm? All right, then we come to the passive, the future passive form in the middle. You take the stem from the, the infinitive. La w. And then you add, la wa, sorry. Um, and then you add undus. But the undus has got to match vestimenta. Vestimenta la wanda sunt. So this ending, as you would expect with, with a passive, matches the subject in case, gender, and number. And then the sunt, and all of this together says the clothes must be washed. Now, this passive paraphrastic thing you don't see very often in classical Latin. If you're reading Cicero, Cicero didn't use it. Um, Caesar uses it a little bit. Um, my experience with these sorts of things is that they have been used, that they're used more in colloquial spoken Latin. In fact, this particular example um, I actually used when I was at Nerdy Lantern Camp. People asked me if I wanted to go eat lunch and I didn't have any clean clothes. And so I said, you know, no thanks, lo uh, westimenta lo wanda sunt. The clothes must be washed. Um, and it came out, it was nice and quick, it was very, very nice. Um, there are some examples in the sentences at the back of the book that deal with participles that actually have this past paraphrastic in here. Um, can you use different uh, tenses of sumese? Sure, to do this. Um, I've done that too. Uh, but in general, that's basically how passive paraphrastics work. I think they're big fun. Um, and uh, that's all I have for you on that. Bye.